Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Spirit of Scarcity. Beloved family, our text says, The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, about five pounds, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning. But it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Exodus 16, 11 to 12. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the world produces more than one and a half times enough food to feed everyone on the planet. That's already enough food to feed 10 billion people the world's 2050 projected population peak. When God created the earth, he didn't do so with the spirit of scarcity, but of abundance. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in seasons and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. Deuteronomy 28:12. It is in this spirit that the Lord rained down manna from heaven for his people, even though they were grumbling and complaining against him. You want to know your true heart? Can you show love and bless the person who's slandering your name around town? Who is giving false testimonies, lies, and accusations against you? Can you still show them love in the midst of that? I want us to really understand and grasp how deep God's love is for us. In that while we were still sinning against him, disowning him, disobeying him, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrated or proved his love for us in that Christ died while we were sinners. And we see him sending an abundance of food daily to those stiff-necked, ungrateful people. I am guilty of acting that way sometimes. Stiff-necked, stubborn and ungrateful. Father, please forgive me. God is a God of abundance. Even in the face of the spirit of scarcity, he multiplies that which is in his presence. On one occasion, King Jesus knew the crowds were listening to him and it was getting late. His disciples were urging him to send the people home to find some food. But Jesus says, no, don't send them away. You feed them. Now he said this to test them because he knew how the spirit of scarcity and lack works. He was there to feed them spiritually and physically. So Jesus said, what do we have to work with? We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. And what is that for this many people? In other words, there is barely enough food to feed five people, much less 5,000 people. Oh, but King Jesus says, bring that spirit of scarcity to me so that I can make it a spirit of abundance. Help me, Father God. Not only was there enough food to feed 5,000 folks after King Jesus blessed it, but there was enough left over to fill 12 baskets. Where and when we see lack, God sees abundance and overflow. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. 2 Corinthians 9.8 The world wants us to believe that things are scarce in the world. 
Therefore, there is a spirit of scarcity and a spirit of lack that enters the hearts and minds of people. And most times, the government systems promote it. In a capitalistic society, it's all about the individual, which says capitalize on those that don't have to enrich those that do. Why share with others when you can sell it to them? So let's take what God created naturally, bottle, bag, or box it, call it industry and commerce, and sell it to make money and a profit. Now then, one group of people have an abundance and another group has lack. And the spirit of scarcity and lack ushers in poverty. Remember in Acts, after Peter preached the kingdom and teach about King Jesus, they all asked, what must we do to make this right? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 22 to 39. And the text said, Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. In other words, they addressed the spirit of scarcity and lack by addressing the spirit of greed and sharing what they had with everyone among so all had enough. In our opening text, God says to the Israelites, don't store up in the camp because it will stink. Only take what you need daily. Oh, this sounds like the prayer of our Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. God wanted to deal with the mindset of lack and scarcity and teach them that he supplies all their needs and he is a God of abundance and access. People have more cars than garage space to put them in. Some have shoes and clothing that they have never even worn. And people put value in things more than they do in God. In the midst of the pandemic, people were storing up toilet paper as if it was going out of style. They felt like if they stored enough toilet paper, they would be okay in the pandemic. We hoard and think the stuff we get will be our security. But our security is in God. No toilet tissue, shoes, clothes, or car could save me or protect me from any adverse circumstances in the world. There is no earthly security that can compare to God's heavenly security. According to Jesus, anyone who worries about food, money, clothing is a pagan and unbeliever. That is hard to hear, but that is the word of God. King Jesus says, your father knows that you need of them. But seek first the kingdom and the king. Matthew 6, 32-33 I want us to get this family. No matter how much we own, we only own it temporarily. For when we die, someone else will enjoy the stuff we temporarily owned. But the truth is, we never technically own anything. We only have title to it for a short time. Now let me be clear here. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Psalm 24, 1 God created both heaven and earth, but he gave the earth to man to manage, not to own. If Adam owned the garden, God couldn't evict him. How are some of you going to get that later? He alone is the sovereign Lord, but man has taken possessions of the land, in some cases by force, creating generational wealth and riches for one group of people, while impoverishing other groups of people in the process. So God rained down manna and meat from heaven on everyone. He said, take only what you need so that others can also have. I will send more tomorrow. Don't miss this. Who owned the manna and the meat? God did. A select group of Israelites didn't collect all the manna and sold it to the other people. And the masses didn't own it either. God did. Because in a kingdom, the king is Lord. Lord means owner. He owns it all. God gave the Israelites free health care. He said, look at the snake on the pole and be healed. He gave them free water from the rock. He didn't charge the people because he was their king. Now, when man began to rule and be kings, then their system of governance changed. They start to charge and tax the people, creating a spirit of greed and a spirit of scarcity and lack in the earth. 
There is a spirit of scarcity in governments of men today, but there is no lack or scarcity in the kingdom of God. Oh, our King Jesus says to us, I am come that you may have life, not scarce life, but you may have life and have it more abundantly. Much love.